Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Raluca and on this channel we're all about the artsy part of life. Since last week I got a little brave and started a teacup watercolor series of seven paintings, all different and I absolutely love them. I think they're the perfect kitchen art. They remind me a lot of the kitchen art that we find on Pinterest. If you like tea or have a thing for minimalism, I think you will love these paintings. I enjoyed painting them a lot and I encourage you to try them as well. You will be amazed how easy it is and how many possibilities there are to play around and use your creativity. The way I thought I would approach this is that I'll show you step by step the first painting and for the next ones I'll just highlight the differences and some other details I think are worth mentioning. We're starting the series with the chamomile tea. First, the sketch. I started by drawing everything loosely to get a feel of how I wanted it to look like. Then I added a little detail and moved on to going over the sketch with a 0.05mm black liner. Working with watercolor today, we absolutely have to use a water resistant liner. I just go over everything with it. That is why I chose to do the sketch with more details, so that I know exactly where to go in with the final outline. Next I start to color the glass teacup and plate. The plate ended up looking more like a glass disc than a plate really, but as I said, it was a learning process and for the next painting, this problem will be solved. I added layer by layer the cold grayish blue to create a glass effect. With watercolor it is very interesting that you can't really go back with the brush to mix or create a gradient effect after the layer of paint dries because the brush will pick up the layer almost entirely so be careful there. You have to go in with a secure brush and not play around too much because you'll erase pretty much all you have underneath. I'm creating the tea effect using layers starting with the lightest yellow with a lot of water and then the color is getting darker, more saturated and the surface I'm applying it to is getting smaller. I added some steam to the tea to make it more appealing. I used just some black and a lot of water in it. For the shading, I'm using a little blue mixed with some black and a lot of water in it to make it more translucent. I feel like multiple translucent layers instead of using just one opaque color adds a lot of detail and it just overall looks better in my opinion. Next I added the chamomile flowers, it's just one of those details that make it more attractive to the eye. The text is optional. If you are recreating any of these, you can of course do as you please but I like the feel of it with the text under the painting. I ended up using a font that was the opposite of the shape I was creating so far, so if the teacup is wide and short, the text is tall and narrow. I liked the font a lot so I used it for all the paintings in the end. I thought I'd use a calligraphy font but I like this one more, just thought it looked better in this context. And we're adding the finishing touches and that's it for the first painting. We're leaving it like this for now, I will be adding a little background later off camera and I'll show you the end result. Second is one of the most famous teas in the world, English breakfast. Similar steps but I'm changing many details and trying to convey the tea personality and classic tastes through the shapes and lines so that the overall feel is saying English breakfast. That's what we're going for with this one. The cup shape is following the classic lines also. You know how you see the espresso cup or the latte cup and you can tell is for espresso or latte? I think if you just see the outline of this cup you can't really say it's for anything else but tea. It's classic and elegant. As promised for this painting, the plate looks more like a plate. All I did was to draw the shading of it going out from the cup instead of circling around it 
and that made it a lot better. I decided to add a white layer over the tea bag so I create a more believable effect. I used a little acrylic white paint and water to make it translucent. I don't know if there is a rule or something for not using acrylic colors in a watercolor painting or something like that, but for me it worked great. I think if I would have thought of it from the beginning I would have painted the tea bag with a lighter layer and I would have had the same effect, but it worked out great. So I did the same thing for all the paintings in the series and I think it looks awesome. Next I am painting some green leaves for a beautiful contrast with the orange color from the tea, adding the steam because I like my tea hot, the words underneath and voila! Another one ready to frame and hang around the house. I was really trying to go lighter with the glass color, but for some reason the next one is the darkest one. Next I'm following the same steps that I'm sure you know so well by now. I'm just gonna let you pay attention to the process for the next two paintings because they're really similar to what we did so far. Enjoy! For this painting I was getting a little tired of the tea bag in the water story, so I wanted to mix it up. We're going all natural on this one, that's right. The good old leaves in hot water, the way our grandparents used to make it. Or my husband when he goes on mountain hikes. I think this way it creates a more simple, minimal and clean look. We're going for the same painterly minimal look for this one as well. It's a series and we want to tie them together somehow. Today I chose to do that through maintaining the same painting style. But we got to play with the colors and shapes more freely. You can go more creative and wild if you want to. For me this was the feel I wanted. Calm and painterly I would describe it. For the seventh painting, the teacup design is quite different. It's the only tall one in the series. By this point, I got really used to the process and I was approaching it in a more relaxed manner. I'm trying not to put pressure on myself while creating art. I think art is supposed to do kind of the opposite of that. It's supposed to help you release the pressure and express whatever you have inside. So whenever you try to create, I'm encouraging you to remember that and see the difference it makes in your art. I think you'll be amazed. Art is not supposed to be in a way or another, it's just supposed to be. At least that's what I think.
Alright you guys, what did you think of my little paintings? These were a lot of fun to make. And I don't like painting the same thing over and over again. So these were perfect because I got the chance to improve and add a little something something different to each one. So it was a perfect way for me to practice the same idea but have fun while doing it. They're so easy and the effect you get is just beautiful. If you enjoyed this process and want to see more, please feel free to subscribe and follow along for the ride. It would really help me if you also liked this video if you liked it. And until next time, have a beautiful time and stay artsy.